We are honoured to welcome the Chief Rabbi, who will now address the Kehillah. Dayan and Rabbanim Nichbadim, His Excellency the Israeli Ambassador, President of the United Synagogue, President of the Board of Deputies, President of the Federation of Synagogues, Heads of Community Organizations, His Worshipful the Mayor, Member of Parliament, Leaders of the Finchley Synagogue hosting this evening's event, and how lovely it is to welcome this evening Rabbi Jeremy Lawrence, who in a few months' time will become my successor here at Kinlas. Chavrim of Bnei Akiva, Moraiva Rabotai, the centerpiece of this celebration every year is the Ruach given to the event by the Chavirim of Tznuat Bnei Akiva. And at this time when we celebrate the achievements of the Tznuah, with your permission, I would like to address my words this evening directly to the Chavirim of the Tznuah. And to you, Chavirim, I pose this question. What rational explanation can we give for the remarkable historical phenomenon of the return of the Jewish people to Zion after close to 2,000 years of bitter exile? There is no parallel, no matchable experience that any other nation has come close to achieving. For us, we have a ready and simple answer to this question because the advent of Menidat Israel is one of the greatest proofs of the authenticity of our Torah and the truth of the one living God. All we need to do is to look at our biblical sources, starting with the very commencement of the Torah, the opening Perush of Rashi, who asks, surely, seeing as this is a code of law, we should start with laws. Why do we start with the narrative commencing with the genesis of the world. And Rashi answers, bringing the words of our rabbis, that we start with details of the creation to remind ourselves of the fact that God created the world. He allocated tracts of lands to various nations. He gave the land of Canaan to the Jewish people. And then Rashi says, in future times, if other nations come and they say, listimatem, you, the Jewish people, have robbed this land from us. We have an answer. From the very earliest moment in time, this land has been ours. And then we find in Breshit, Perik Yud Zayn, Hashem saying to Avram Avinu, V'natati l'chalu z'arecha charechet eres mugorecha, et kol eretz k'nan l'achuz atolam. And I give this land to you and to all future descendants who come from you as an everlasting possession, call Eretz Kena'an, the whole land of Canaan. At the very start, the founding of our people. We cannot be a full and fulfilled Jewish people without a heart, a home in Zion. And God tells us that it is Achuzat Olam, an everlasting possession. And next week we'll read in Pashat Bukhukotai, how Am Yisrael would go through a very bitter and long and horrific exile, and in the midst of, all, of it all, God tells us, V'zacharti et briti Yaakov, v'af et briti Yitzchak, v'af et briti Avraham eskor, v'ha'aretz eskor. I will remember my covenants with Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, and I will remember the land. Do not worry, O people of Israel. The day will come when you will return to Zion. And so we find our prophets commenting on the miraculous transformation of a desert and swamps into fertile soil and an oasis of Israel. And we find the prophet Zechariah saying, Ko amar Hashem Svakot, that says, the Lord of hosts, od yeshvu zekenim uzkenot birchovot Yerushalayim, the time will come in the distant future when once again in Jerusalem old men and women will sit down on benches and little boys and girls will play games in the streets. 
Zechariah here is speaking about the Yerushalayim which would twice be destroyed. The Yerushalayim which the Romans plowed over in order to remove any semblance of the presence of those who had previously lived there. As if to place a death notice over Am Yisrael saying, this is where a nation once resided but is no more. In that very place there will once again be a city, says Zechariah, with normal modes of practice. And then the prophet Jeremiah tells us those beautiful words which we love to sing. Od yishama be'arei yehudav chutzot Yerushalayim, kol sason ve'kol simcha, kol chatan ve'kol kala, the day will come once again of the thousands of years when we will celebrate chatunot in Yerushalayim and in the cities of Judah, when the sound of a bride and the sound of the groom will once again be heard. And here the prophet is not only referring to Jewish tradition and Jewish law, but to the very essence of our faith, the foundation of Jewish families to preserve Jewish life within a living people. And the prophet Jeremiah brings comfort to our mother, Rachel, who sees the Jewish people pass by her tomb en route to an exile in Babylon, and she is told, wipe the tears from your face. V'shavu me'eretz o'yev, your children will come back from the lands of the enemy. V'shavu vani melikvulam, your children will come back to their own borders. And this has all Baruch Hashem transpired in our time, written thousands of years ago. That is how it was possible to happen. A true, authentic book of law prescribing a way of life for our people for all time, written by the one true everlasting God for us to witness and enjoy in our time. And then the prophet Isaiah tells us, Eight Sarah Heliakov, Umimena Tivasha, it shall be a time of sorrow for, ja for Jacob. And from the midst of it, he shall be saved. The best possible description of the decade from 1940 to 1950. There's an amazing midrash. And to heal him, Perek Kaf. The midrash tells a simple story of a father and his son who were going on a journey to a destination the son had not frequented before and while they were on the way the son turns to his dad and he says Abba heichan hi Medina, father where is this city you've been talking about I suppose that was the ancient way of saying are we there yet and the father turns to his son and he says Bani teidalach my son I'm going to give you a clue a sign kasher tir ed beit hakvarot hamadina when you see the cemetery, you will know that we are close to the city, as indeed we know. Cemeteries are on the immediate outskirts of cities. But the fascinating thing about this Midrash is the term Medina that is used. There is no reference to Ir or Ayara or Kfar. The child asked, Heichan hi ha Medina? And the father gives that sign. And so therefore here we see a text written by our rabbis 1,800 years ago describing the journey of the Jewish people in exile. Our Father in heaven accompanying Am Yisrael. And three times a day we've called out, God, why are we not there yet? Where is our Medina? And now we can also understand with tears in our eyes the sign that was given when we went through the cemeteries of Auschwitz and Birkenau, of Belsen, of Treblinka and many other death camps, Hamedina Krovalach, we were nearly there. Eight Tsarahi Leakov, Umimena Tivashea. It has been the most bitter time of suffering for the people of Jacob, but from the midst of it, we were saved, and Medinat Yisrael was born. And so, Chavirim of Bnei Akiva, my question to you is, now that we understand this historical background and the hand of God in our history bringing us to this celebration of 66 years of Israel's independence tonight, how do we respond adequately to the call issued by Medinat Yisrael? And what answer do we give to her detractors? 
I believe that the answer is in Himnon Hatznua, the Yadachim, written by Rabbi Moshe Tzvi in the Cholam Oed of 1932 in a Sukkah in Kfar Saba, where he met with the Hanala of Bnei Akiva then. And let me quote for you just two phrases which you know so well from Yadachim. Midei Abir Yaakov, Lanu Morasha. From the hands of the protector of Jacob, it is an inheritance for us. There are two things referred to in the Torah which are Morasha. One is Torah, Morasha Kilat Yaakov, and the other is Eretz Yisrael. So what's the difference between Morasha and Yerusha? They are both an inheritance. A Yerusha is an inheritance that comes to us automatically. It's like money which is deposited in our bank account. It's a Yerusha. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to engage with it. It automatically becomes yours. A Morasha, however, is an inheritance that you can only appreciate it and only enhances your life if you have contact with it and engage with it. So it is with Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives the inheritance of Torah to every single Jewish person throughout all generations. But if, God forbid, we are so detached from our people that we cannot appreciate Torah and we're not in touch with it, we can live a lifetime without it. And so too with Eretz Yisrael. It is our Morasha. If we engage with it, if we visit it, if we live in it, if we enable it to inspire us, it becomes our Morasha, a life transforming form through which God can touch his people throughout the ages. And then, in your Himnon Hatznua, we say, Belevamitz Bezrat Hashem, Alona Aleh, with courage of heart and with the help of God. You know, there are those who have a Hashkafa of Belevamitz. That is sufficient from a secular point of view. Let's have courage of heart. Let's be loyal to Israel. Let's fight for her. Let's use our talents to protect her. But we will leave out any spirituality. We won't bring God into the picture. On the other hand, at the other extreme, there could be a hashkafa of Bezrat Hashem only. Let us rely on miracles without us doing anything. The Bnei Akiva way is to fuse the two together. Belev Amitz, Bezrat Hashem. With courage of heart and with deep faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The way in which Chavrei Atnua have fought in the front lines of Tzahal while looking heavenwards with deep emunah for guidance from God. Echoes of that great battle in the wilderness of Sinai when we fought against the Amalekites and Moses raised his hands so that we would look heavenwards for help from God. And so Bnei Akiva throughout its wonderful History has continuously given its best to the land of Israel through living there, through visiting there, through participating in her life and fighting for her very existence, instilled with deep rooted faith in Akadosh Baruch Hu. And then we go on to say, Allah Na'ale. These words were originally said by Caliph Ben Yufuneh. His response to the report of the ten spies who accompanied him and Yehoshua. They spoke Lashon Hara about the land. And his response was, you might be in the majority, but Alona Aleh, Yehoshua and I are proud of this land and we will continue to sing its praises and to strive to live there. And so too today, we're living at a time when there are those who are seeking to delegitimize and demonize Israel. Sometimes they are in the majority, but our response must be Allah na'aleh. Regardless of what you say or think, we are proud of Israel. We are proud of her significant achievements through 66 marvelous years of its existence, often being attained with our hands tied behind our backs. We are proud of Israel's democracy. We are proud of Israel's spirituality. We are proud of Israel's bravery. We are proud of the Torah Yisrael for Am Yisrael, which has been taught from Medinat Yisrael. And we will continue always to cry out, Allah na'aleh. We will provide 
unwavering, unstinting, and absolutely passionate support for Israel always. And so, Chavirim of B'nai Akiva, I thank you for appreciating our spiritual heritage, the hand of God in bringing us to Medinat Yisrael and enabling us to celebrate yet again her independence tonight. I thank you for the strong Kesher, the connection that you establish with the Morasha of Torah, which enhances your lives in such a wonderful way. And I thank you for the very strong connection you always make with Morasha, which is Eretz Yisrael. And my blessing for you is, Yazilachem Kochav Torah, may the star of Torah always shine brightly upon you. Kadima Bnei Akiva, Midat Na'atle. Forward Bnei Akiva, may you go forward to even greater heights. And in this spirit, with your contribution to Bnei Nat Yisrael, together with the support which is being shown today and at all times throughout the Jewish world, let us announce with pride, Kadima Bnei Medinat Yisrael, Heydad Venale. Forward, O State of Israel, may you go forward in your 67th year to even greater heights, the Chinyiratzon Ben Omar. Amen. Amen.